Hey guys, I saw Bear here, and today I'll be talking about the update 0.7 for the game Foxhole. This update brings some major server and world changes, and also some nice personalization changes. So let's jump in with the world changes first of all. There's a new map, and it's called Lobby World. More of a placeholder name, I know. But essentially what this is, is this gives both teams a small training island on which new recruits can learn the game, veterans can practice, and soldiers can just generally hang out. So as I said, for the new players, the purpose is to help them learn the game and train them to be proficient at just general actions in the game. The islands feature a training course that you can run through, shoot targets, throw grenades at, an artillery range where you can practice setting your azimuth and ranging your gun, and a driving course to learn how not to run friendlies over, and a few other things scattered around these islands as well. The other purpose for the lobby world is to be used as a waiting area between wars to help teams kind of balance each other out. So now, once a war ends, you won't immediately start another war. You'll be taken to the lobby world, wait for a few minutes, and then the next war will start. And if you look closely enough on these islands, there's even a little bit of lore scattered in there. A new world structure that's come to us is the drawbridge. Yes, the bridges have finally seen an update, and it's a big one. The drawbridges, as the name would imply, are bridges that can be raised and lowered thanks to two control mechanisms on either side. So here's a quick rundown of the bridge controls. You have to flip the switches on both sides of the bridge for it to be raised. Once a bridge is raised, however, either side can be used to lower it. And once the bridge is lowered, both control consoles are reset, and both must be reactivated to raise the bridge once again. It might sound simple at first, but raising bridges actually provides a lot of depth, because in allowing vehicles and infantry to pass over a lowered bridge, it does deny access to water vehicles, such as APCs or gunboats, the ability to cross underneath the bridge. So you either deny armor and infantry, or you deny naval power. And some nice personalization was put into the game. You can now select some visual character options. These include setting your character to be either male or female, and also selecting the skin tone for your character. It's minor, but it's always nice to be able to personalize your options in the game. Just remember, you get options for both your Warden and Colonial characters, so make sure you put the right options on the right character. Some gameplay features and changes include Recently in the community, there's been some talk about implementing a surrender option. Some players have proposed that surrendering should be based on certain conditions and if they're met. Other players have suggested just a simple vote system, where players can vote if they want to give up on a map or if they want to keep fighting. The devs have listened to this, and they've decided to go with both. So the conditions are that the losing side must be down to their last town hall. The enemy team has to have claimed all the other town halls in the region, and enough time has to have passed during this war in order for the option to become available. Once that option is available, it is then up to the players to vote whether they want to surrender or not. In order to do this, in the F1 menu, in the top right corner, there's a flag marker. Selecting this flag marker will place your vote on surrender. If over 70% of the players on one team vote to surrender, once all those other conditions are met, only then will the war end in a defeat for the surrendering faction. So hopefully this improves the flow of the game a lot. We'll have to see how it plays out in game. Water vehicles can now be repaired in the water, so hopefully we'll be seeing a lot less broken down boats in the middle of Farinac Coast. And players can no longer walk on top of heavy gates or any wall structures. Some other changes include landing docks, armories, supply stations, hospitals, workshops, shipyards, and vehicle factories all now have visual damage states. So that means the more they get damaged, the more dilapidated they're going to look. On the campaign screen, there is now a join campaign button that has been added on, so you don't have to select the map individually. You can just hit join campaign and you will be thrown in automatically. I think this will also come into play during the future World Conquest update because if a bunch of maps are full and some of them do have some spots open, it will likely just throw you into one of the maps that have open spots, put you where you're needed, that kind of thing. And there's now a HUD notification when using the manufacturing plant when your team has a balance boost applied to it. Just a little recap for those of you who don't know, the balance boosts are essentially a slight buff to the amount of resources and materials you get when scrapping if your team has a player disadvantage compared to the other. 
there were some other major bug fixes along with this update, but I'll save that for the patch notes down below. Thanks for tuning in to this update. As always, be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest Foxhole updates. And as always, good luck, keep your heads down, and stay in your foxholes. Bear out. <laughs>